guys so today's lesson is all about a data warehouse schema and also in the previous lessons we've studied about the data warehouse OLAP cube so data warehouse schema is the basic implementation of an OLAP cube so let's see that in the further lesson and also please to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also please to rate review and recommend our videos to all your friends who might be needing this topic thank you so much hello everybody welcome to lesson number seven that is uh, data warehouse schemas. I'm Hashleen Kaur and uh, I'm currently working at Gartner as a research associate and I have been as an educator with Neon Education for the past three years and I have also completed my BTEC from Chen University Bangalore and I'm also an active at support volunteer at the NGO Make a Difference. So starting off with uh, today's topic that is data warehouse schemas. So what is a schema? So giving you an example, we have previously studied about the OLAP cube, right? So the OLAP cube was nothing but the multidimensional modeling of the entire database for our queries. But how is this OLAP cube made? The first step, the first step, how the OLAP cube made is using a schema. So what is a schema? A schema is nothing but a logical description of the entire database. That is our entire database consolidated in a small little description that is giving us understanding of the entire database. So this schema includes the name, description of all the records uh, of however it is present in the database. It includes all the data items, it includes all the attributes, the sub attributes, however it has been defined uh, previously. And uh, also how we maintain a database, the same way we need to maintain a schema. It is very important as to how we maintain a database, whatever operations that we use. And a database uses a relational model and a data, a normal database will use a relational model, right? But a data warehouse will use three types of schema, which is a star schema, snowflake schema, and a fact constellation schema. So today we will be uh, seeing what, what exactly is a star schema and what is a snowflake schema, because this is very widely used. Uh, so starting off with, um, in a schema, we need to firstly know about two things. Then only we can jump to a star schema or a snowflake schema and know more about it. So the first two main things that we need to know is what is a fact table and what is a dimension table. Okay, so as you all could see, even in this, this was a star schema, this was a snowflake, no, snowflake schema. So here, in a star schema and a snowflake schema, what we can see here in between is called as a fact table. See, the center refers to the fact table and all these radiating points, that is wherever these are radiating, right? Those are called as the dimension table. So everywhere, whatever model it might be of a schema, the first thing that we can find is a fact table and the second thing we can find are dimension, dimension tables. So all these boxes here you can see represent tables and tables are nothing but different views of the database that we're going to be taking out. So the implementation of a data warehouse and the business intelligence model, any business intelligence model requires a schema as the simplest dimension model, as in a schema must be present at the simplest form for us to go further with any of our implementation of a data warehouse or a business uh, intelligence model. So the first thing, uh, the fact table. So the fact table basically is the center table, right? And that contains all the measurable and the quantitative data. Okay, so it uh, so this means that it has all the numeric val values. So in these numeric values, they will they will be something called as a foreign key. So what is a foreign key? You all would have studied in, uh, in database management systems. So repeating again, a foreign key is any key which references to any other tables. That is any other dimension tables or any other fact table. It will give a relationship between our fact table to that particular dimension table or the other fact table. So it, it basically makes a relationship amongst two tables. So that is a foreign key. And the table is designed in such a way that all the facts that are included are all stored at atomic level. So atomic level is like the basic level, the numeric level. So this helps us to store large, large amounts of records at one time. And uh, also, apart from a foreign key, we have a unique key or a primary key or a surrogate key, which is always present in a fact table so that we can identify each row in our database uniquely. So always, you know, there should be something which is unique. So for example, we can maybe have employee ID, which is unique, or maybe a pin code, which is unique, because these things will not uh, will not be redundant, redundant data anywhere. So we should have a unique key in every fact table. 
so moving further so this is what looks like a fact table and a fact table is um, primarily of three kinds that is first thing a transaction fact table uh, so this basically gives recording about a specific event for example we only want to know about uh, the amount of sales happening during a holiday event that's it so that will give us recording of a particular uh, time and then comes a snapshot fact table which also gives us a uh, uh, recording facts only for a particular period that is period refers to a month year a quarter or any time which we are going to be mentioning okay the third thing is accumulating tables according to aggregations at a particular time so this can be multiple conditions so here as you can see in the example we have multiple conditions that is we want total sales and in a particular month so this is multiple conditions these are three kinds of fact tables that we have moving forward what is a dimension table so a dimension table can be you know in in one they can only be one fact table but they can be multiple dimension tables so a dimension table always has descriptive data it does not have numeric data it has descriptive data and the number of uh, records that are inserted uh, in every dimension table is less than a fact table for example a fact table might have eight records okay eight rows but a dimension table might have only two three four so that is the reason it is split amongst different dimension tables and um, some of the most frequently used dimension tables as examples i'm giving you are a time dimension table geography dimension table product dimension table employee dimension table range dimension table etc so uh, we can divide a dimension table um, with particular conditions that is maybe you want to accumulate all the employee records in one table you want to uh, accumulate all the product records in one table so you make up different different dimension table for each of them and similarly also these dimension tables also have a surrogate primary key as we spoke before so um, this primary key uh, along with other attributes form a natural key so that this is very important again to form a relationship amongst the tables or to identify any row uniquely and um, let me give you an example here so in a dimension table for example uh, i'll just read out the uh, problem statement that we have see we can create a sales fact table referring to an event with product key customer key promotion key date key item sold and revenue generated so we have about uh, about six uh, conditions here and for every fact table key for every every fact table key separately we're going to be having many dimension tables like product dimension table so this will have all the information of the product name then um, it will have uh, information like the product name product type quantity of the product size of the product color description others so likewise we're going to be having different tables for also customer key so this this might be a customer dimension table so this will have customer name email id phone number birth date gender address etc and also don't forget it will also have foreign keys why because it has to be referenced to other tables and uh, this way we will also have a promotion table we will have a date time table or a period table a period dimension table items uh, dimension table and the revenue sales dimension table so this now we spoke about what was just the fact table mm -hmm. so this fact table can help business people calculate their total sales total items sold in a month or total revenue generated at the end of the day at the end of the month or at the end of the quarter whatever queries come it can be done using all the uh, all the data provided in the particular fact table and all the six seven dimension tables <coughs> so the example here you can see it's very very simple so this is an example of a so as you all can see uh, here in between is the fact table so the first uh, so all of this will have all the numeric and quantitative uh, items that is the first thing is a item key then it has time id then it has branch id location id and then it has numeric values such as quantity sold amount sold and average sales this is what is there in our fact table so amongst this we might keep e uh, any one of maybe the uh, item key as the primary key and we have taken 
four of this as the foreign key which is helping us reference to the other tables let me show you one example so uh, yeah also here we have this as the item dimension table branch dimension table location dimension table and time dimension table right so uh, the first um, uh, prav, uh, primary key that we have here is item key so item key is a foreign key for the fact table but it acts as a primary key for the item dimension table so using this key we are reference reference uh, referencing to the item dimension table and in this we have various other attributes such as an item key item name brand sold by category so these are not any numeric values they can be a mixture of numeric and also other character uh, character values so like that again the second time id is a foreign key to the sales fact table and it is again a primary key to the branch table where you have branch id branch uh, name and also the owner and thirdly uh, you all can see time id so time id is referencing to the time dimension table where you again have so many other uh, uh, values such as time id day month quarter year anything and then location id again references to another table as the for, uh, primary key and it gives us so many other attributes so this is how a particular schema is formed and it helps us to identify the table really really easily identify what is there in the database identify look at the data from different views so this is what is going to help us to make our olap cubes and then form deep down operations on them and make decisions so this is it for this uh, this lesson so please to rate review recommend our lessons and you all can follow me on this link here thank you so much